We now bring you part two of my earlier interview with Jonathan Oppenheimer. He says he does have faith in the country and the continent. I think that uh, the, the 2019 local elections have provided a really interesting tipping point in the, the political landscape of South Africa. It's the first time that the ANC has polled under 50 percent. And we are moving into coalition government. And I think that it is going to be a real test of South Africa's metal, how those coalitions shape up, how they can begin to define the space that we operate in, and the enormous challenge that we face both politically and economically in South Africa is how do we create an environment where the majority of South Africans' well-being is improved, and that can most easily be measured in the urban environment by an increase in disposable income. And that increase in disposable income will primarily come from additional growth. If we aren't able to create a rapidly growing urban environment, I think we're going to be increasingly confronted with challenges which could result in events like July. But at the same time, the economic numbers coming out of South Africa are encouraging. I saw that uh, government had increased its um, uh, forecast growth for 2021. Uh, to something like 5%. I know it's off a very low base, and I just hope that we embrace the necessary policy and operating environment to encourage additional growth in South Africa, which I firmly believe is achievable. I mean, the commodity boom has helped. You're heavily invested in private equity in Africa. What have you learnt, and is there an African century on its way, the one that we are waiting for and hoping for? So that's the billion dollar question. And I, <clears throat> I look at it both in terms of the opportunity, and I do believe there is an extraordinary opportunity in the businesses we're invested in across the continent, both uh, in South Africa and, and further afield, are all doing relatively well. Yes, uh, from time to time, local challenges, but are doing relatively well and are certainly giving us a return which is commensurate with, what, with our expectations. In addition to that, uh, we are determined to make sure that those businesses make a meaningful contribution to the communities they operate within, both at a policy government level and at a society level. And that is something that is very, very important to us, and we are beginning to see the fruits of those endeavors. So I do believe that there is extraordinary opportunity. At the same time, Failure to grow Africa represents a potential really significant crisis, not only for Africa, but for the world. And uh, I hope that people begin to recognize that and understand that a very honest, brutally transparent, motivate, motivated conversation, which balances both the need to grow and grow quickly and the need to look after our ecology and our environment, particularly against the threat of climate change, uh, is, is embraced by all actors, both uh, domestic, uh, regional and international. Last question. When we talk about public and private partnerships, is there any strain with words such as radical economic transformation, white monopoly capital, etc., being band bandied about? Does that put any strain on your relationship as the private sector, especially white-dominated private sector, with the ANC and the ANC-led uh, government? I, uh, anytime somebody is nasty to you, of course it has an effect, and uh, being, being accused uh, from time to time of, of white monopoly capital and, and the likes is unpleasant. But at the same time, when I talk to people in government, I don't see that. I don't see people embracing those ideas. I think that that is, uh, by and large, a, um, a, a view which is not the mainstream view. And uh, the reality of, of a, a system in a society is one where the system is growing quickly and people are feeling prosperous and then these tensions fall away. If we aren't able to create sustainable growth, aren't able to create additional jobs in our economy, particularly confronting the extraordinary levels of unemployment we have and youth unemployment in particular in South Africa, then uh, I think that the... the attractive the short-term attractiveness of uh, these radical populist uh, positions will grow 
And I think that anyone who wants a South Africa for their children, grandchildren, and future generations beyond that must embrace the need to create greater well-being across the population, across all of us who are committed to being in South Africa. And in that regard, uh, I think that the, the challenge is creating that growth and making sure that it's, it's, it's broadly participatory uh, rather than ha held in the hands of the few. And uh, what I'm doing and what we're doing at Oppenheimer Partners and what the family is committed to doing across South Africa and the continent is achieve exactly that. Growth which is broadly based, growth which uh, is generational in its nature and growth which uh, creates well-being while protecting the ecology and the environment we're in. Well, that was Jonathan Oppenheimer of the SA Future Trust.